Are you tired of living in a vicious circle? Are there days you don't want to leave the house to face the world because you just don't feel like it? Now, do you really and truly desire a beautiful, fulfilling life, yet you feel it's beyond your reach? Now, what if you could start making teeny tiny small steps right now, like right now today, to make that happen? Would you? Hmm. Well, we are here today to share with you that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. This week's guest has personally lived this journey and she's here today to share her experience and tell you that yes, there is a way out, that you don't have to live in pain and that you don't have to live in full of anxiety anymore. So welcome to episode 34, Finding Your Joie de Vivre the Coffee and Confidence Show. So grab your coffee, your pen, paper, your favorite hot beverage, and tune in to today's impactful episode. So excited. Hey guys, it's me, Kelly Kerrigan. I'm your host. My business is Empower Me Coaching, and I am helping sensitive souls, people pleasers, empaths, worldwide to help to set healthy boundaries to make themselves a priority so that they can calm the chaos in their life they can live a life of confidence and create something magnetic just for themselves so that's a little bit about me so without further ado i want to introduce to you today's guest dun, 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 drum roll please i want to introduce to you natalie lemire so natalie was diagnosed with fibromyalgia when she was 26 years old Imagine that. You know, she's been diagnosed with severe depression, burnout, and has been hospitalized several times. So she knows what she's talking about. She has found her joie de vivre through nutrition and diet, and she no longer experiences debilitating pain or anxiety. So she's here today to share her story and share a few tips with you to help you find your joie de vivre. So welcome, Nathalie. Thank you so much for being here. So please, why don't you share with us a little bit about yourself? Hi. Thank you, Kelly, for having me as a guest on your show. I really appreciate all of this. And uh, so a little bit about myself. Uh, like Kelly mentioned, I was diagnosed uh, with fibromyalgia. I was very young, 26 years old. I was uh, married, three little kids, and I was a dental hygienist. Um, fast forward three years, and it made me crash really hard because it just... The, like uh, debilitating pain just brought on depression and everything. So I became a hermit. <laughs> I stayed in my house. I wouldn't leave. I did everything I had to do for my family, but it just, it took everything away from me. And I was living in this vicious circle of depression, pain, insomnia, and it was just too much. Uh, good thing my husband was my main, uh, he was he was my lifesaver. Good thing he was there to be able to take care of the kids. Whenever I was sent away, it was uh, him taking care of everything. But you know what? Throughout all those years, it brought me a lot of knowledge. Um, I, I, I found... A lot of things that could help me, you know, you go out, you get resources and all of that. But it was when I decided that I had to get my life into my into hand and start living again. Well, we are what we eat. And I had to get back into a healthy eating lifestyle. And that just brought so many positive changes to my life. I can now say that uh, I'm not saying that I am cured because the fibromyalgia is never going to go away, but it has given me a lot of positive things. I can now enjoy life. My, my fibro is under control and it has been an incredible journey. Uh, just more energy, feeling healthy, better sleep, you know, everything we are all looking for. I finally found it again. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I can't see myself. Can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. 
Awesome. I just can't see myself. I don't know what happened. Oh, I can <laughs> see you. That's weird. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that is really strange. I just can't yeah. see myself. Hmm. Uh, well, yes, that is quite the that is quite the story, Nathalie. You I, you know, I look forward to you sharing your knowledge because I know there's people out there who are living today like you are living and feeling that there's no hope and feeling that they're in that vicious circle and wanting more but just not even thinking it's a reality for themselves and they don't know how to get out of it. So I'm really looking forward um, to you sharing that. So because this is the Coffee and Confidence Show, it is time for what is in your cup. So we do this little fun piece. We get we share what's in our cup. We ask the viewers to share what's in their cup this morning, what they're, something they're drinking. So how about you can share first, Nathalie? Um, well, in my cup, I have to, I am grateful. I am so, so grateful that I finally uh, found my health again and that I'm able to enjoy life to, to its fullest, you know? So that has been like an amazing thing. And um, it's all about listening to our body and how it talks to us. So that is what I'm doing. And that has been like incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. So I will share what is in, I'll share what's in my cup. If you guys can see me, I can't see myself, to be quite honest. <laughs> yes, you have a beautiful cup, girl, boy. Uh, yeah, so it's my new, um, my new cup, girl boss cup. So I'm trying something a little bit different in my coffee. So those people, those of you who tune in regularly know that I do love coffee because this is the Coffee and Confidence Show. Um, and this morning I'm trying something a little different in my coffee. I made like an Americano, so espresso with some water. And then in the blender, I added a tablespoon of grass-fed butter and some medium what, MCT oil. Like I can't medium try. Yes. <laughs> right. I, I forget the whole name of it, but um, it's supposed to, uh, you know, it's it, what I describe it as is like a super refined coconut oil. So you get all the benefits from that oil. It's supposed to help with weight loss, um, cognitive, and it's supposed to, you know, just be beneficial to your health overall. So I'm trying that in my coffee and I'm quite impressed how it came out really frothy like a cappuccino and it's really tasty. There's no sugar in it. Um, you know, I'm doing my best to stay away from the sugars because they don't <laughs> agree with me. So that is what is in my cup this morning. So I wanna remind everybody, the viewers that are tuned in live, or whether you're catching the replay, please say hello. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And please let us know what's in your cup this morning. It could be coffee, tea, water, a shake. It could be gratitude. It could be anything that you want to share. Uh, and, the most, and the best way to get the most out of this show is to join in on the conversation. If you have a question or comment, please share it with us and let us know. So before we get on to the conversation, Natalie, um, we have a couple of comments. So Danielle says, love it. Um, thank you so much for tuning in, Danielle. And uh, I think we've got a Nathalie fan. Toby <laughs> says, you are awesome, Nathalie. Yes, thank you for tuning in, Toby. Thank you. And we have Julie. She says, amazing. Uh-huh, I love that word. Amazing, awesome, two of my favorite words. So let's let's just get into it. One thing that you mentioned in a previous conversation with me is that, you know, one of the benefits you experience is that you found your old self again. So my question is, where did the old Nathalie go? Because I hear so many people say that, like, oh, I just want to get back <laughs> to me, or you know, when they have you know, found their joie de vivre again. That's one thing that people say is like, oh, I just want to connect with my old self. So just like, what was that experience for you? So where did the Nathalie go? Well, what? she was crushed between all these, um, these events happening in my life. You know, I kind of lost myself slowly over the years. Uh, first came uh, the pain and then you just kind of, 
keep going because that's life, you know? That's what we tell ourselves, that life is like that. And, you know, I'm a very um, type A personality, so I'm very hard on myself. So you can only imagine along all these years, I just lost every aspect, my sense of humor. I lost my joie de vivre. I lost uh, my uh, socializing skills because I thought that, you know, you go out, people are going to judge you. And I think that was the biggest concern of myself was being judged. Mm. And um, when... I started getting healthy again, and I saw that light at the end of the tunnel. I really realized that I had not been happy throughout all these years. I had lost that, like you're saying, that joie de vivre. And I was stuck in that little circle, and it seemed like I did not want to go anywhere, or I couldn't see myself going getting out of that so I had to really listen to my body and it really brought you know um, by healthy eating because we are what we eat um, my the inflammation left my body I just woke up one morning and I felt happy and I could not remember being happy for the last 16 years so just having that happy feeling was like, wow, what is happening, you know? And then you realize that just by feeling happy, you want to go out, you want to see people. It just brings everything back into finding your old self again. Because I was always a bubbly person. I was very social uh, Mm. all over, you know? So it was really a matter of listening to what my body was telling me and just doing what needed to be done to get Mm -hmm. back to my healthy self again. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. One thing that you mentioned is that, you know, you were a perfectionist. Now, does perfection exist? No. (laughs) (laughs) So why do we keep searching for it? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. But no, it does not exist. No one is perfect. We can aim to do our our best, you know, and just when we're doing something, we want to do it to our, our best ability, but nothing is perfect. No one is perfect. And as long as you're giving 100% of whatever uh, of yourself doing whatever you're doing, be happy with yourself. Be happy with what you've reached and what you've succeeded in doing. Right. So I'm just going to dig a little bit deeper. How do people get stuck in the vicious circle? Like, so they're in the circle, but then how do they get stuck in it? The way I got stuck in that vicious circle was really, I felt, like I said earlier, I felt crushed. I could not, I tried so many things over the years to try and help me and nothing, nothing was working for my condition. And it seemed that every time I tried something to help me, let's say I tried physiotherapy, it didn't work. Well, it crushed me a little bit more. Yeah. And you try something else and it crushes you a little bit more. And it gets to a point where you can't be crushed any lower because you've hit rock bottom. And that's where, when you are there, you don't see that light at the end of the tunnel anymore. And that's how my way of thinking is you get stuck into that vicious circle. Mm -hmm. And you just get stuck living into that routine. And it seems like there is nothing you can do to get yourself out of there. Uh Uh-huh. So this place, this rock bottom place, now in my experience, personally and professionally, I have seen beautiful, beautiful things immerse and come from somebody who has experienced rock bottom. 
it's a tough place to be when you're in it to see out of it. But I have seen, and you are living proof, you are that experience, is that, you know, we get so down on ourselves that we're in rock bottom. But sometimes it takes those really hard lessons, those hard situations to make us search for something more. It does. It does. And I have been looking for a way out for so many years. And when I had my friend share how she got out of her vicious circle and it kind of really resonated with me, I reached out to her and it was all a matter of listening to my body, healthy eating, uh, giving it the supplements that it needed and I lost you, Kelly. <laughs> You're not there anymore, beautiful. So, yes, it was really a matter of, you know, uh, feeding my body properly and just, uh, you know, I had lost you there. <laughs> um, yes, I'm back. Okay. I was just, I honestly, I was just trying something because I can't okay. see, so I'm not confident that anybody else can see me, oh, but okay. uh, I could totally hear you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And it was like... I needed that little boost because sometimes, you know, you're trying to do this on your own and you're, you're missing that little boost to get you where you want to go. And that is what I found. And that really helped me get back on the right track to being happy and healthy and, you know, just enjoying life again. Yeah. So, you know, what I'm hearing from that is like, don't give up. No, never. Right? Like, don't give up. Because if you give up, then you are accepting living in that vicious circle. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yes. yeah. So don't give up is what I'm hearing. So I want to know, so how has diet and nutrition changed your life and improved your confidence? Well, it helped me get rid of the toxins in my body. Because I had a lot of inflammation caused by my fibro, uh, taking a lot of medication, you know, it does affect your body. So I was like really looking to get rid of all that. And healthy eating, you know, when we feed our body properly, it will help get rid of all the toxins that our body has. And we don't realize, we, quite often we think we are healthy but we don't realize all the toxins that from the anything surrounding us affects us. So it really, really um, helped when I got rid of those and just getting rid of the swelling that was causing me. My mobility was limited, you know. So just getting rid of that was like, oh, I can move properly and I'm not in, in any pain. So just that was like oh my God, this is amazing. You know, it's getting better. And so really it's, it's, it's a lifestyle. That's what it is. It is a lifestyle. It's not something you do just for a month or two months. You know, it's a lifestyle that you adapt, a routine that you get into. And you just, I incorporated a uh, daily exercise also because I now had the energy to do those. And, and the mobility. Exactly. And the mobility. And just by incorporating the exercise, just that. Anybody that does 15, 20 minutes minimum per day are going to notice uh, an uh, increase in their energy. So right there, you know, you're putting everything on your positive side and it's really, it's really helping the overall results, you know? Yes, absolutely. So we have some uh, other comments coming in that I want to acknowledge. Um, let me just see here. So we've got um, Caroline. She says, hello, Natalie. <laughs> Hello, Caroline. Thank you so much for being here. She says that she uh, is from Kappa Casing, if I'm Kappa's saying that. Right. Kappa Casing. Yeah. Kappa's She's an casing. hour. Yeah, an hour away from where I live. 
Uh huh. Because you're in Northern Ontario, Canada. Yes. Yes, we are. So Toby says in her cup this morning, uh, water and zipstick. Yes, and that's exactly what I have in my cup. Also, water and zipstick. Awesome. I'm going to ask about that in a minute. Uh, my cup is full of love and gratitude, says Caroline. And Toby says, so happy you got you back. That's totally directed at you, Nathalie. Thank and, you, Toby. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Toby says, depression and anxiety keeps you living in a tunnel. Yes, yes, yes. And again, Toby says, yes, we are what we eat. I totally agree with that. Absolutely. I 100% agree with that. We are what we eat. If we eat, you know, junk food, we feel like junk. But yet if we eat like nutritious, alive food, we feel vibrant and alive. And I've seen it in so many different people of like when they're eating and, and you know, living a healthy lifestyle, not only what they're consuming you know, drinking and eating, but what they're consuming through the media, what they watch on television, who they surround themselves with, all of that has a direct impact on one's health because a lot of these toxins that you're talking about, I also believe that, uh, you know, we have emotional toxins. Like we have emotional stuff that like sticks in our body and causes us aches and pain as well. That's so for we sure. Can get rid of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what easy small steps can the viewers take that they can start doing today that if they did something just teeny, teeny tiny minute consistently that in the end it would add up to something amazing so that they can start living their joie de vivre? Well, first, uh, I always say listen to your body. Your body is talking to you and, you know, uh, we don't realize how it's talking to us, but sometimes we'll eat something and we feel bloated. Well, right there, it's telling mm. you, this is not for you. It's not good for you. So things like that, you know, just make, take the time and listen to your body. I, I'm a strong believer or, of going out of your comfort zone every day. Every day, try to do something that's going to bring you out of your comfort zone a bit. And the more you do that, the more you're going to want to try something different. So give us an example. What is something that you have done recently that is outside of your comfort zone? Well, um, uh, this today <laughs> is really... Uh, I do live videos. I do all kinds of... Uh, that, but uh, this interview today had, has been going out of my comfort zone for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, every day, every day I reach out to people and that brings me out of my comfort zone because, you know, you're reaching out to people you know, but sometimes you're also reaching out to people that are uh, strangers and you need to build a relationship with them. So that mm -hmm. is taking me out of my comfort zone. And I want to add something to that too, because I know there are um, some people who might be out there thinking, well, oh gosh, no, I wouldn't want to be on an interview where, I don't know, I couldn't reach out to people. But it could be something as simple as go to a different coffee shop, go to a different, uh, go to a different grocery store, you know, say hello to somebody you wouldn't normally say hello to. It could be something that small outside of your comfort zone, outside of your normal routine. So that's to have, you know, to create change, you have to make change. But it doesn't have to be something big and crazy all at once. It can be something so small, minute, right? Exactly. And that is the next thing. Set, your, set some goals for yourself. Mm. But don't set humongous goals. You know, because these, those won't be as achievable. What I like to do is I set myself some little goals. And once I've reached one, it's like, yay, you know, it's celebrate your success because you've reached that goal. And then you go to your next goal and so on and so on. And that is just incredible, the feeling that it brings to you when you reach one of your goals. 
it really makes you want to keep reaching for the other ones, you know? Mm-hmm. So that is, um, that is a, one of the points. Um, oh, well, can I, I want to add something to that sure. because, you know, it's progress, right? <coughs> progress is what keeps us motivated. Progress is what keeps us going. And it's not always the end goal, but it's the progress. It's making things happen, right? And before we get going, there's um, a couple a couple of comments that I want to acknowledge as well. Um, so Toby says, positivity feeds the soul. Absolutely. It sure does. Um, Julie says, <coughs> excuse me, so true. I can't remember what she said so true about. And Toby says, do the unexpected, change your day, go do something that you normally would not, right? It might be taking a walk. Yeah, exactly. It could be something really, really simple. That is so true. And like you said, even just changing a grocery store or something, or something that I've noticed is putting out, like I'm a happy person, I always have a smile on, but whenever I go out and I see someone who seems like they're not having a good day, I'm going to make sure to give them one of my biggest smiles. And quite often, they, it, they will end up smiling. And that might make the difference in their day. You know? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so really, that is, uh, I find that you, want, you need to be the sunshine in other people's lives sometimes because uh, they, 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 they're stuck in the little thing. And uh, just like I said, just a smile from someone else might brighten their day and make the whole difference in how their day is going to go. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Because when you're I'm going to hold up my cup. So when your cup is full right? You have lots to give to others. So why not go out and just, you know, emit that positive energy, a smile, hold the door. Yes. Because people really feel that kindness. Although you may not, they may not be like, Oh, thank you so much for smiling or thank you. You know, you may not get that response back, but they may really remember that throughout the day and it really might brighten their day. Yes. And that is not the goal of getting you know, recognition for it. Right. Exactly. You, you should not be looking for that because you're doing it to make someone else feel good. And while you're doing that, it, it makes you feel good because mm-hmm. you've brightened someone else's day. So I find that if you're doing something and you're expecting recognition for it, you might as well not do it mm-hmm. because that is now how it works you know yes so give um without expectation right exactly exactly Mm -hmm. and I found that has brought me a lot of happiness doing that Mm -hmm. like you would be surprised I every week I do what we call a wealth Wednesday and Uh, every Wednesday and sometimes it's not on the Wednesday sometimes it's on another day whenever I see the opportunity you know I'm at the grocery store and like we're we live in a small town so we kind of know the community and I know someone is struggling financially I'm not the one who has the most like biggest finance we're we're doing good you know we're getting by and we're happy we're comfortable but it brings me so much happiness to be able to give something to someone who who I know is needing it Mm -hmm. you know even if it's just a five dollar gift card for the grocery store or and you want to do that to someone who you, 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 like, sometimes I know them, but I don't know them personally. And I don't want them knowing it's coming from me. Mm-hmm. So it's unknown, you know, or you go through the drive through at Tim Horton, and you pay for the order of the car behind you. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, that just, that is something that I started doing two months ago. And every single week, I do one act of kindness like that. Oh, that's amazing. 
Mm-hmm. It, it brings you so much. I don't know. It just fulfills me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's some great advice. So it doesn't have to be much. Like sometimes, and if we are the ones that, um, you know, if we don't have as much money, you know, you don't need to be giving big. But just the fact that you're giving a little something, it's going to come back. And you know what? It's going to impact your life positively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wonderful. Is there anything else that you wanted to share with the viewers today before we get going? Um. Just like I said, there is light at the end of the tunnel. So don't give up, okay? Do little steps at a time and try to reach out. Uh, Reach out to others if ever uh, you need help or you need to talk. There's always someone out there who's willing to listen to you. Uh, Good nutrition, daily exercise, those are all things that are going to help you uh, feel better and be happy again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on today and sharing. That's amazing. So I want to invite you to share with the viewers how they can get in touch with you. Um, they can always reach me. Um, we're on Facebook with through Nathalie Lemaire, Louis Roy. And they can always send me a um, message to Messenger. Or um, um, I also have like um, uh, a business site also, but uh, it's always easier if it's uh, someone who doesn't know me to reach out on Facebook Messenger. I think that Mm -hmm. is the best way to be able to connect with us. Awesome. Yeah. So if you're online and you feel that you feel drawn to connect with Nathalie, please reach out, send her a friend request and start that conversation because just get an outside of your comfort zone, you know, to send somebody a message and, and, you know, maybe you have more in common than, than you first realize because I know that's happened to me many as of time. Uh, yes. Yeah, so that's it. That is episode 34 of the Coffee and Confidence Show. If you've enjoyed the show, I want to remind you it's a weekly show. We're now on Wednesdays. I used to do it on Thursdays, but it's now a Wednesday weekly show live um, on Facebook. And next week, I have an amazing guest lined up for you, but I don't want to give away all the hints just yet. So stay tuned. And as well, if you uh, feel a connection with what I'm doing, the work that I'm doing with, you know, empaths, sensitive souls, um, people pleasers. I'm going to leave the link to my group. I have a coffee and confidence group as well, where the whole mission is to grow in confidence with like-minded people. So I will leave the links in the comments once we're done the show. And I welcome you, Nathalie, as well, to leave any links in the comments once we are done the show. So thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you. A special thank you to you, Nathalie, for being my very special guest today to share with them on how to find their joie de vivre. Thank you so much for having me as a guest. I really, uh, this was really fun. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.